Well, just to let you know that Father Kuhn is back tomorrow, so you'll have him. He doesn't know it yet, but he's going to have the 8 a.m. Mass. Um, I, have a, I have a funeral tomorrow morning, so I'm going to ask if he can pick that up. But also, while I'm on that topic, uh, if anyone that's coming to Mass tomorrow can stay and help put, take down the, uh, the Christmas decorations. Uh, I know Marcy back here is probably crying as I say that. She loves Christmas, but uh, if you can help with the cleanup of the Christmas decorations, Tomorrow after the AM Mass, that would be great. So we, we continue, the author of Hebrews continues with his reflection on Psalm 95. So Psalm 95 from yesterday's first reading, he mentions, All that today you would hear his voice, harden not your hearts, as at the rebellion in the days of the testing in the desert, where your ancestors have tested and tried me and saw my works for 40 years. Uh, because of this, I was provoked with that generation. I said, they have always been errant hearts. They did not know my ways. As I swore my wrath, they shall not enter into my rest. Okay, so Psalm 95 is really a psalm. First of all, anyone who prays the Liturgy of the Hours begins with Psalm 95. That's like the first psalm uh, that, that I pray every day. Um, a song glorifying, praising God, but also a psalm uh, almost one of warning to remain faithful to the covenant, remain faithful to God, uh, or else it will not enter into his, into his rest, which is today's, again, really the, the, today's focal point. Okay, so he says in the middle of the passage, for we believe we, believe we enter into that rest, just as he said, as I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter into my rest. And yet his works were accomplished at the foundation of the world, for he has spoken somewhere about the seventh day in this manner. This is the second time that Hebrews has done this, where he says, you know, you've heard somewhere about this passage, and the passage that he's referring to is a very familiar passage. It's almost like, again, tongue-in-cheek, you know, here he's quoting the beginning of Genesis. They, everyone knows the beginning of Genesis. But he says, oh, they have spoken somewhere Somewhere you might have heard about the seventh day. And then he quotes the scripture passage. And God rested on the seventh day from all his works. So why even talk about all this, I guess, is, is the main feature. Remember what the letter is about. The letter is about, the letter is about, how do I put this? Showing that the sacrifice and priesthood of Jesus Christ is supreme to the Old Testament priesthood and sacrifices. Okay, that, that's what this is all about. Jesus' sacrifice and priesthood is what we should focus in on, and we don't have to do the Old Testament priesthood or sacrifices anymore. Okay, that's, that's the overall gist and argument of this letter, okay, or of this homily. So again, it begs the question, well, why is he going into the seventh day of Genesis and rest and all this other stuff. Well, here it is. Look, and remember at the Genesis story. I did this, you know, in my, in my uh, Bible study where there was a beautiful rhythmic pattern in those first six days of creation, right? God said, let there be light and there was light and it was good. And God called the light day and the darkness night. That was the first day, you know, uh, that's the first day. I forget how the ending goes. And he does that for the next six days, that beautiful rhythmic pattern. But then when he gets to the human person, the rhythmic pattern stops because the creation of the human person is much different than the rest of creation. We're much different than the rest of creation. God says, God looks within himself and says, let us make man in our own image and likeness. And then after the creation of the human person, be fruitful, multiply, those types of things, given dominion. Then it says, has the author quotes, God rested on the seventh day of all his works. The rest that God is referring to is that of covenant. In fact, the word seventh is the really almost the same word has covenant. Okay. The seventh day was created for the purpose of covenant. How is the covenant expressed? The covenant is expressed through worship. And notice that in Genesis, the seventh day never ends. We get no formula saying, and this was the seventh day. You know, it's, it's just that God rested on the seventh day from all his works, implying 
that the seventh day is made for what? Is also made for eternity. That the purpose of the seventh day is to enter into relationships. Okay? And so with the seventh day, with our rest, okay, which we consider on Sunday now, and the Sabbath used to be the Saturday for the Jewish people, for Christians, it's the day of the Lord's resurrection. Okay? That's the day of worship. The day where we put aside all of our troubles, everything that bothers us throughout the week, and set our side for what? For worship and dedication of God. And now the Hebrews is telling us to what? To continue to believe in that. Because again, he's writing to people where there's like groups of people leaving all this. They're going back to the old way, the Old Testament. Okay? And again, what? Kind of ignoring Christ or not believing in Christ. And for us, it's the same, you know? The, the seventh day is not just be a day where we don't do work. No, it's a day of worship. A day where we enter into communion and relationships, not only with God, with, with others. And that rest, that love and communion and friendship that we enter into with God is going to be perfected and it's going to last for all eternity. Because as I said in the book of Genesis, the seventh day never ends. May God bless you.